What's up everybody? This video has three helpful tips at three. Okay, so please listen the entire way through because number three is the most powerful tip that can change your results dramatically. I'm talking about boost your sales, boost your income, boost your mentality, boost your attitude in the direction that you want it to go. I know there are a lot of loan officers right now that are going through the grind and their their facial expressions might be worrisome, but I, I gotta tell you right here, genuinely, you know, one to one, like just me and you. Like if you got a license and, and you're out there hustling, you're out there grinding, you're, you're fighting to keep that attitude you know, positive, you've come to the right place. I'm going to tell you how. More importantly, I'm going to show you how to pick up a couple extra sales for giving me your time and watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. Let me show you everything I know. Jungle you a loan officer today that just wants to know how to pick up a couple extra units? Like the markets change, bro. <laughs> Like you're looking around, you're like, dang, ain't no one really smiling no more. I remember people used to high five each other like every minute bragging about their tears and bragging about their bonuses. And man, it's gotten pretty slim as of late. You know, if you're a loan officer and you're coming up in this environment and if you survived thus far and you still work in the industry, because a lot of people who were licensed last year are just simply not licensed anymore. And, and there's there's a double impact to that to that reaction number one is we have a, a brand new generation of loan officers and mortgage bankers that just got licensed and that might be you like you just got licensed you're like damn bro am i late to the party <laughs> Like you get there and everybody left already and shit and everybody's all kind of grim but you remember working your working your way through the ranks in the telemarketing department like yeah i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it and you're all motivated and then you go through you know you go through that nmls test right and maybe you fail once so then you gotta wait a month and you're like man i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it you know and your, your mindset's strong and and you watch uh, you know the winners win and you you stay focused and you subscribe to ad sales remaster you're just pumped you're just ready right and then you finally get your license you know what i mean like you're ready to pop the sh champagne bottle you come out to the sales floor and damn near 40 percent of the staff is gone <laughs> right the top producers are still busy doing what they do because they're gonna win regardless but most of the individuals that you looked up to are just kind of grim like their frown is you know they, they just got frowns on their face and it's probably because they're they're focused they're grinding but more importantly they're worried and i want to help you avoid that that mental torment right the second way it impacts everyone is number uh number two is because a lot of people no longer are in the industry it leaves us right in this position where it's like damn and you know we're kind of caught in the crossroads we're torn in between we're like damn should i get out too and then and then and then half of us is like nah man this is good this is a good sign it just means that you know i get more leads right like less mouths to feed in my environment so i'm gonna get more bro i'm gonna get more you know and you try to stay positive but in your lowest of times you can't help but think like man am i am i doing the right thing and so if that's you and you're a loan officer a mortgage banker or have anything to do with mortgage loans and you want to know how to pick up your business you want to know how to get a couple extra sales every day let alone every week or every month do you want to know how to hit them tiers and and stay consistent do you want to know how to sell regardless of what the market is regardless of what your fees are regardless of discount points closing costs lender fees because i know that that is a pressure point with a lot of salesmen they believe that they can only sell free services they believe that they can only stay competitive because the borrower or the prospect said that some broker across the street was offering them a 2.5 when the environment clearly is in a 4.5 type of era and so i want to help you i'm going to give you three tips on how to increase your sales production today and close a couple more loans What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and on this episode, I'm gonna give you three helpful tips on how to increase your close ratio, on how to increase your close count and increase the likelihood that you'll hit the tier bonus uh, every month 
consistently and get acknowledged for the hard work and the dedication you have. And I know you're dedicated because you're probably driving to work right now, feeding your mind and trying to get your mind right. The reason why you're trying to get your mind right is because this sport is like a blood sport. It literally is a brutal sport. Not too many people can last. And just like I had mentioned earlier, a lot of people aren't even licensed in this industry. But if you've remained strong, if you've sustained your license and you're maintaining the everyday grind to you know find that that higher level and to reach that higher level that you know deep in your heart that you could reach well I'm gonna award you today for your hustle because I see you and more importantly if I'm if that's you and this message resonates to you do me a favor comment below let me know that it does let me know how long you've been licensed let me know how long you've been in the industry let me know how you found the channel but more importantly timestamp your favorite part of this video whichever one of the three tips that you find most helpful and and most impactful to your day-to-day -day hustle because the information I'm gonna share with you these three tips are not only designed to help you remove the grind right not only designed to help you save yourself some time but it's designed and put in a way to help you increase your income because sometimes that's just all you need you just need to see the results to know that it's possible when you know that it's possible then sky's the limit so the three step or the three steps the three tips that I'm gonna share with you in this episode to help close more loans is step number one be organized man I can't tell you how many times I see loan officers desks and loan officers uh, like inbox right like like for example if I go to a loan officers desk and it just looks like a tornado hit it like there's just no rhyme and reason to anything it's just a bunch of hosh posh now granted some people can operate that way I get it but a lot of times if you're struggling it's probably because you're just in a mass array like you're just you're unorganized right like the 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 perception of your desk is kind of like the bathroom at a restaurant right if you go into a bathroom at a restaurant that could tell you how how clean they keep their kitchen well if you look at your desk and you look out how organized your day is from your calendar to your inbox that tells you how you keep your your mindset how you keep your household and so it's important to stay organized because if you're not organized you're in just in this kind of your there's a lot of unsettled things and when there's a lot of unsettled things ultimately that means that there may be a leak somewhere in your process so you might notice if you're very unorganized and you have a thousand unread emails and your desk just looks like a tornado hit it you're gonna notice that you may have a good you know uh, uh, conversion from like from from prospect to lock and then submission and then you go fill up the pipe right constantly fill up the pipe so you're good at that part but because it's never really truly handled there's a lot of unsettled business a lot of the deals die in processing or a lot of a lot of the times you're getting complaints because your pro your prospects can't reach you or your prospects can never get a hold of you and the reason for that is because they probably are one of the unread 1900 emails inside your inbox get into a point where you you become obsessed that you have to clean your desk right like I got this ritual um, every single month I wipe my, my desk down like I gotta clean it and it's literally right at the end of the month so once everything closed out I clean off my desk and it's it's mentally my way of cleaning all the bullshit all the drama even all the victories away because that that month is now gone now it's on to a new month and when I start the month off that way and my inbox is all cleared out right like there's no unread emails like I feel that I have everything in order and it's helped me greatly maintain my you know this mindset maintain my uh, my energy because I'm not looking at an uh, inbox with 1300 unread emails and I don't carry on any anxiety of like oh no did I miss this message or oh no did I miss this prospect the whole reason of being in sales is to be accessible right you got to be accessible because if your client if your prospects can't reach you your clients can't reach you what the hell you doing make sense and so besides tip number one which is organization tip number two is strategize you gotta strategize whatever you do in the day you have to have some sort of strategy and I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you an example like a lot of times when we originate deals right like 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 50% or more of your day should be focused on originating new business but because we are unorganized or because we don't have a strategy or a plan or a planner or a calendar that we that we rely on oftentimes we'll find ourselves kind of just doing 90% just maintenance 
of 90% of our day is just maintaining. It's just basically maintaining our leads so they don't go red or get swept or maintaining our, you know, our pipeline so that way every single unit goes, <laughs> right? A lot of it's maintaining and, and when we flush out the origination portion of our day, our production goes low and this is where you see your, your income kind of go up and down. And so strategize is very important because if you're just, you know, going about your day with no strategy, right? No saying, hey, I need to make sure that I block off at least five hours of the nine hours that I'm here today towards origination. But more importantly, not just block off and strategize and be organized with your time blocks and, and where you put your efforts, but strategize your origination plan. Like, are you, just, are you just taking in leads or are you just blind dialing? Like, if you're relying on a dialer, which you gotta imagine, a lot of people who are inquiring, are, are, a lot of them, they simply just didn't qualify. They didn't qualify the past two or three years and now they're getting advertisements like, ooh, maybe this time it'll work. And so that's why you're getting people who got 300 FICO scores. You know, like literally the FICO score is 300. You might be like, yo D, man, the lowest FICO score is 350. Yeah, well you found the dude with the 300 FICO, right? Or like, hey D, man, a lot of these clients are literally just got out of bankruptcy or already got a foreclosure or they got a 3.2 five percent and they want a lower interest rate and this is the time of type of people that you're running into on the dialer and so how do you change that how do you increase the odds into your favor so that you could win a couple sales and and it really comes down to strategizing strategizing and knowing where you're hunting and who you're hunting for and so here's an example instead of just blind dialing out like if you can focus on a few key uh things that 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 is happening right now in the market a few key things for example is going to be like fha to conventional right like a lot of people bought with an fha loan because they just came out of the you know the 2008 recession so that even though that was 10 years ago there's still a lot of people who are just barely getting getting back on their feet right now and so they may have uh, finance on an FHA loan right because they couldn't qualify for conventional plus they had a small down payment and this means ultimately that they have mortgage insurance and so your strategy can simply be focusing and putting your time where where your time is needed and your time is not needed with conventional people who are on that 3.25 and just want to rate and term you don't want to talk to Jim who has no credit card debt 12 months of living in his bank and and he's got a three percent you know 15 year fix and you're trying to sell him on a 30 year right like, I can save you some money I'll give you this 30 year at five and a half percent you have to understand that you're just going to meet more resistance that way and you're just going to kind of create this conflict where all you're being told is no and that that's it's it's detrimental to to your mindset it's detrimental to your you know your uh, your momentum and so instead of just going about it blindly and instead of just crossing your fingers hoping that you find some business and that a couple loans just fall on your lap today be strategic know where you're focusing your time you know know what time you're giving out your most effort right like so if you're if you're choosing to block off these few hours to call out where are you calling bro like are you calling the west coast at like 2 p.m you know what the likelihood is of you reaching a qualified homeowner at 2 p.m right like during during the day and you're, you're upset because all you're leaving is voice messages well you got to be considerate you have to strategize where your time is so maybe 2 p.m. might be best for the East Coast because that's five o'clock people are clocking out people are probably in in commute to go home and and it doesn't mean that you can't close in the West Coast business just move that West Coast time block to maybe 5 p.m. and after Right, like, it, like, but then you might be like, "Yo, D, man, I gotta go home early, bro. I get in at seven. I gotta go home, man." The, the, the fucking answer is, do you want it or not? Right, like, if you want it, do it. Go get it. Right, like, I, I'm not gonna, I can't explain to you, uh, you know, how to bend time just because you want to make it home in time to, to watch This Is Us. Right, like, just because you're, you you got The Bachelor on tonight and you and your girl love to sip wine and eat fucking hors d'oeuvres while you guys watch The Bachelor, how are you gonna fit that in? Like, bro, you gotta prioritize your time. Like, what do you want? You want money? You know, you want production? You want that confidence? You want that momentum? Or do you wanna do you wanna rush home to watch something that you could have easily TiVo to record it? So the answer, the question, or the answer, the answer is is within your priorities. You know, you you have to really justify and and kind of weigh out your pros and cons and, and, and prioritize what's more important, right? And so what's more important is it, right now, because the market is where it's at, what's more important is that you're conscious with your time, you're strategic with your time, you're organized with your time. And then finally, number three, 
is you have to position yourself as a consultant, not a salesman. You have to position yourself as an expert. And so, for example, you know, I uh, instead of relying on the dialer because I still originate, I go old school. I get I, I network with. Uh, uh, key players within my industry. So I, I network with like uh, title representatives and these title representatives They uh, you know, they provide leads right they provide title leads and what's cool about these title companies is that they'll give you they'll scan uh, Leads based on when the loan closed who closed the loan what kind of loan um, and 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 they'll even filter out all the data to give you the ones with phone numbers and then they'll pre scrub those phone numbers and find and tell you who's on the do not call list so that way you're not you know what I mean you're not calling anyone who's on the DNC list and you're liable to fines or liable to get in trouble so they pre screen all that information and then they give it to you but here's the thing though is that out of 10,000 leads you might only have hundred and eighty that actually have phone numbers and are not on the do not call list and you might be like hundred eighty leads bro that's sucks well actually no it's not because it's so filtered that those 180 people are the people that actually need your service now what would you rather spend your time with Jim who has no debt 12 months in the bank and a 3% 15 year fix talking to him like hey come on Jim I could save you 30 bucks let's go to this 30 year term at five and a half percent come on bro it's cool or would you like to spend your time with 180 contacts that actually need your service because maybe they're closed or they originated their loan through a high retail price Price or through a high retail markup like Quicken Loans, or maybe you have uh, uh, these retail branches or offices within your area or a specific area that you're licensed in, and you know for certain that they have a high retail markup on their rates. So focus on them because more than likely you can refinance them into a rate term and still give them a lower rate, or you could get them out of their FHA and still give them a better term. Does that make sense? Now the question is like, okay, but D, but that's an outbound, man. I don't know how to outbound, bro. I just take inbounds. Well, that's what I'm talking about is you got to position yourself a as a consultant so it's not a question of how do I call and sell them it's really a question of how do I call and serve them and so you have to look at serving right like being helpful because that is what positions you as an expert so for example there are three things that I oftentimes look for right away when looking at a lead whether inbound or outbound those three things is number one it's their county number two it's their street name and then number three it's the loan term right like if they're on an FHA or if they're on the conventional term or 30 year or 15 year fix so your CRM should be able to tell you this information and if not you should find out the information input it and uh, farm that lead protect that lead because that is the business that's worth your time and so if I knew these three things I'd be like hey Daniel you know this is Daniel with uh, with new American funding hey I, uh, I, I I've been meaning to get in contact with you to send to you some information regarding your property in Orange County I see your property on my and I know that you financed your your house on an FHA loan within the last three years the reason why I've been meaning to send this to you is because I've been helping a lot of homeowners within the Orange County area and I've been helping them discover the increase with regards to their property value. This has positioned them to remove themselves from an FHA loan, which thus, of course, removes the mortgage insurance. So I want to send out this report that I've been sharing. It's completely free. Whether you use it or not, it's completely up to you. In the very least, you're going to know what your property value is, and you're going to know what influences your property value. I even got this cool report that tells you the, the uh, school, the rating on your on your local school district. So if you got kids in the school district, it really helps. So I could send it to your email or I can mail it to your house on my third. If you want me to email it to you, you'll save a tree and you'll be able to see it right now. How do you want me to send it? Very simple, right? It's not a sale. You're just giving them some information that, that they're going to bite on. They want to know the value. They want to know the rating of the school district. They want to know how to exit FHA. They want to know how to remove mortgage insurance. And there's no threat. You're not asking them to buy anything. You're just saying, hey, it's free. Whether you use it or not, you know, it's completely up to you. And so then they'll agree more than more, more Oftentimes, they're going to say, just go and email it to me. I'd like to see it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Email it to me. And ultimately, what you're doing is you're just sending them a property profile report, right? This is something you have access to. This is something you have at, at a click of a button. And then here's here's the catch. When you email it to them, say, hey, the information on there, it's very helpful, but sometimes it's kind of confusing. So if there's any questions that you have, just jot it down. Just write it down. Make a note and say, what does this mean? Maybe write a question mark and highlight it. And then, and then give me a call. We'll go over those questions so that way you 
you could stay informed and then you can position yourself to get out of the term that you that you have right now to better protect your family or or to remove the wasted money to, that you're putting right now towards mortgage insurance and actually focus that back towards your principal and oftentimes when they get this report it you know if you it's your first time like a prime profile report you don't know what the hell you're looking at right and so of course that's going to create questions but more importantly it just that's the, that's it you're not asking them for an application all you're doing is planting a seed and then you're selling the plant so when you plant the seed and give them the report and give them that info and give them that sneak peek now you have reason to follow up now you have now you have an upside because the likelihood of them contacting you back with questions is very high and when people call you there now you're in a position as a consultant you're in a position as an expert right because they're calling you back now, when people, when we call, if we think about it, when we call someone, it's because we want something. And so if they call us, it means they want something. Make sense? Now you're an expert and they want the information that you have as a consultant. And so they may be like, yo, D man, I got this 3.25 30 year fix, bro. I know the rates right now is like four and a half, five percent. It just doesn't make any sense, bro. Why would I, why would I refinance my three and a quarter percent? or my three and a half FHA fix, bro. It just makes no sense. Well, now that you're the expert, you can actually educate them and say, well, at the time you finance your loan, I saw that you finance 96 and a half percent. So that basically means you have permanent mortgage insurance. So even though your, your FHA rate is 3.5, FHA charges you mortgage insurance rate <clears throat> of 0.85. So technically speaking, you're almost at 4.4%. So my goal is to help you remove that mortgage insurance because your alternative is to pay principal, interest, and mortgage insurance or pay just principal and interest. I can tell you that one of the alternatives or one of those choices is going to greatly improve the likelihood of you paying off your house faster. More importantly, because you have you have permanent mortgage insurance, you actually have to exit FHA as soon as you can because the interest rates are going up. And you don't want to wait a year or two because then the rates will be too high and it will make no sense and you'll be forced to continue wasting money towards mortgage insurance. So I did the quick math and it looks like you're dumping about $350 of mortgage insurance. You may not even need to. Instead, I could show you how to put that towards your, your principal balance. And, and, and as a result of doing the refinance, I'm going to show you how to free up a couple thousand dollars that you could put in the bank. But if you're focused about paying off credit card debt or maybe you already paid off credit card debt and you just want to replenish the accounts you use to pay off the credit card debt, I could show you how. But let me ask you a few questions first. I just want to make sure I can even offer that option. And if I can, I'm going to show you exactly what I could do for you. But if not, at least I can tell you exactly what you need to do to protect yourself. So the property that we're talking, and then you go into the sale. Makes sense? That's how you attract business. You see, too often times we're waiting for a dollar to deliver. It's like playing lotto. Don't play lotto. Take control of your destiny and, and utilize these three tips today. I hope that you love this video and I hope that you have enough uh, uh, time to leave a comment, maybe timestamp the section that you find most, most helpful. And more importantly, if you haven't already, check out, check out salesremaster.com. If you if you don't know, there is a um, sale, limited time special sale. I'm calling back to school sale on on one of my programs called uh, the Close, which is basically the Banker's Closer Guide. It's a complete breakdown of how to originate, solicit inbound, outbound uh, 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 loans, right? How to inbound, outbound sales origination, how to market, how to how to prep the conversation, how to sell in the conversation, and then transition from conversation to sell and then actually close that sale. Does that make sense? So it gives you everything from Alpha to Omega on how to originate, market, solicit, sell, and close. And also, there, more importantly, there's this objection video that just tells you all the objections you're getting. So if you're having problems with getting shopped, if you're having problems with, with people saying they're not interested, then you got to get this course. You know, it retails for $397. I got it on sale right now for $197. How much does one extra loan pay you? Like if you're not making $197 on one extra loan, right? right and more, the, here's 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 the kicker the fact that you now learn this this uh this this close strategy or the sequence that i share with you it's going to help multiply your closes so not only one sale but a couple extra sales and i'm talking about per week boo boo not just one per per month i'm talking about a couple extra per week so what would that do to you so if you had a couple extra sales per week which manifests up to at least five plus 
units per month, what would that do to your income? Would that be worth the 197? Of course it would. It'd be worth the 397. But I got this introductory this introductory special to get you into the sales university. I want, of course, the more the more reviews I get, the more uh, 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 awareness that I get. It helps me with the bigger goal. So I don't mind, you know, bringing down the price a little bit just to give people a sample and give and and invite you into my world uh, on sales. Uh, remaster university but give you the upper hand because right now it's a grind so if you want to protect your time you want to protect your license go check it out salesremaster.com there's a link below this video and if you act now before the sale ends you can get that 50 percent off on that uh banker's closer guy i'll see you on the next video bye Talk and get to it. Oh, look at him. Rip hard, really do a part. Look at him. We can buy the boy all night.